<laughs> yes, the Rubik's Cube. I never could do it, you know. I need a mathematician to help me. Can you do it? Well, oh, something else. Hmm, yes. Something else here, too. It's not a proper Rubik's Cube, it's something else, isn't it? Well, I'll show you what it is on this bit of paper. When I turn the top of the Rubik's Cube as if I'm trying to solve it, something's coming out. Pepper. That's what it is. It's a pepper mill. Lovely idea. This was designed by a friend's son, Jonathan Pooley of Worldwide. His teenage son thought of the idea, knowing his dad makes these novelties for household wear, and said, let's make a Rubik's Cube, which is a pepper mill. It's a pepper mill, the pepper corns go in there, you put the top on, and you turn it, and out comes loads of pepper. Lovely idea. And they had a good sale with that. This is about 10, 15 years ago. They had a good three or four years of sale. And of course, you had to have some complement to go with it, which is a salt mill. So if I turn this one again, it's got inside and it's in the, in the top of it. When you open it up, it's got a compartment of the salt. But I'll turn it like this and we can get some salt coming down, the grains. Oh yes, look, salt. Mm. That's salt, yep. So the idea here is to show some very unusual condiment sets. I've got a little condiment clan, as it were, along here, of items I've come across over many years of collecting, which are all port salt and, and pepper mills, or whatever you want to call them. And there's quite a number of them. Some of them are very wacky. I mean, those two are a good start. But look at this pair here. This is a charming idea from Pilon in France. It's a little wind-up one. Isn't that cute? Pick him up, turn him over, see what he does. Oh, yes, pepper. That's nice. What a lovely face, too. Here's his friend. Wind him up. Set him off. Whoa, lovely. And he must be a salt one. So, yeah, yeah, look, 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 salt there. So, if people ask us pepper or salt, you wind them up and send them across the table, and they say, what a lovely, charming idea from the host to do such a thing. Peel off. Well done, French. There's another one from Germany, which is very clever, which is, um, in fact, we sold this on the website for a number of years by Berenson, a very fine design company in Germany, and, and probably in Hamburg, there they are. When someone asks for the salt or pepper, you say, coming over, here we go, it's going to roll across the table. Well, it's an Oloid, designed by Paul Schatz, a German, about 1920s. But we sold that for a number of years, and when the person who's asked for the salt or pepper picks them up, he simply pulls them apart like that. Magnets in the corners, salt here, there we are, and some pepper here. Stays it. Now this is a clever bit. When you look inside, there's magnets in the corners there to hold them together, they clasp together. But the hole for the salt comes out of the middle and that matches up with a blank bit here in the middle of the pepper. And the pepper holes all the way around the outside match up with a blank bit around the hole of the salt. So when the two are combined together, they don't, they don't get adulterated, they don't mix up together or spill out either. So that's a clever, nice, a nice bit of design, but the action is superb. A salt and a pepper mill coming across the table, rolling down. That's a beautiful concept. Here's something much more surrealistic from an American company called Fred, who make very strange things. I've only got one of these. I haven't got the, the pepper version, but it's a, it's, a, it's a salt cellar. But it's an inverted salt cellar, because a normal salt cellar is inside. Put your finger inside and there's nothing there, just air. But around the salt cellar is salt. Sort of inside out, out there. And there's a little hole at the top, so when you do a bit of that, yes, you can get salt there, and it performs. What an extraordinary idea. So underneath, there's just a complete a, a gaping hole, and that's the empty salt cellar. But of course, it's a kind of negative space, and all the salts on the outside of the thing. What strange things they design, these designers. I get the impression, you know, from many years of going to these trade fairs, that every design college throughout the world says, when they start a three-year course, OK, the first week, the first term, design a salt cellar, design a pepper pot. Here's a lovely one, which I think is very charming. Reminds me of the snowman, the cartoon. A little couple embracing like this. But of course they are salt and pepper. This one, brown, of course is, is pepper. A bit of pepper. And this one, the white one, the snowman, is a bit of salt. And they can put on the table like that as a little couple embracing. I've seen three or four different sizes of them as well, but that's a very charming design. Quite well known, and as far as I know, it's still available. It keeps coming back and coming back again, because people like the design of it so much. Here's quite a clever thing. I picked this up in Holland about 10, 15 years ago. All they sold you actually on the package was these little lids with little caps to them. You just lift up the cap like that. And they expected you to provide the actual receptacle. In this case, it's the old well-known film canister. 
So I've got lots of film canisters for toys and other things in my collection, so I easily found those. Put what, the, the, the pepper in the black one, of course, and the salt in the white one. And to make them work, you simply lift up the lid and shake them. There's pepper. And put the lid back on again. And this one is salt. Lift up the lid and shake some pe salt. Nice way of recycling old film canisters, which at one time, well, they're getting a bit rarer now, but at one time there were just thousands and thousands of being thrown away from, from um, photographic studios and from, from the chemists where, where they developed the film. So a nice way of recycling the pots. This is a very strange one I found about 10 years ago. It was, um, I think it was a French company, and the idea was to offer a pepper or salt grinder for people who got stiff hands, couldn't grasp things, you know, a, a touch of arthritis perhaps. And the idea for this one is you can't actually, if you can't actually grip things and, and, and turn them, then you can't get ground pepper. But you don't do that, you put them between your hands, which can't grip, and you simply roll the hands back and forward like that. And that's a pepper mill, it's actually rotating that bit up there. When you want to replace the pepper, you simply lift it up, and there inside you put the little peppercorns, and then put it on, and it's this very simple action, you can always do it between your arms. In fact, if you're born where you haven't got hands, which occasionally happens with people, um, you can still use it, or put it against the side of your, side of your wrist to make it work. But it works as a, as a, as a, as a pepper grinder, and it's, that's what, a very clever idea. Now. The last one I've got to show is the very first one I got in my collection about 50 years ago. It was, I think, mentioned in a magic book, or was it a practical joke shop? And it's a lovely way. It can be played either way. It's um, something I've adapted, but I'll show you how it works. When someone at a party, lunch or dinner party, asks for pepper, you hand it over. They say, no, 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 not salt. I wanted pepper. He said, yeah, yes, yes, that's pepper. Um, it's salt. It's pepper, you insist. Try it. It morphs. It magically turns into pepper as you turn it. It's pepper. Oh, so it is. And then you've got to do the other version for the salt. What's happening here, of course, is fairly obvious if you're mechanically minded. All I've done is... I put a little tiny plastic pot in the top containing ground pepper. There's the salt, perfectly good salt there. Boom, 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 plenty of salt, but you don't use it like that. You put that in there with the pepper, put this on top, and you've got this lovely thing which could be a magic trick or could be a practical joke. For a practical joke, you don't mention anything. Just when one guest picks it up thinking they're going to get salt, out comes pepper. Lovely. I never gave it a name, but thinking about it afterwards, I thought, well, in the spring and autumn, we always talk about the changing seasons, you know, going from summer to winter and then back to summer again. So here's an example of um, changing seasonings, do you think? Huh, nice idea. Have a go.